Hey guys, here we are. I've got my brand new boat in the water, turning these units on for the very, very first time. We're gonna set them up. I got Jacob, AKA the product expert at Lowrance. Man, thanks a lot for coming out here on this really cold evening. Uh, man, I just, I want to teach everybody what you teach me every year. I'm fortunate that Jacob comes out every year. I usually take him fishing on this day. Uh, he just sets all my stuff up, makes it super simple. I wanna show you guys what he does though for when you get your new units. It's really simple. So, how are you, man? I'm doing good, man. Like I said, it's a little <laughs> bit chilly today. It but is, it, it is. It you is. know what? Any days out in the water is a good day. So, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I, yeah. Whatever the weather is, I, I'm down. So, you know, things have been good. Just, we've been busy. We got a lot of projects that have been oh, going no. on. And, I'm so excited about the active target. Some of them so. are here on this boat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really cool. I got two HDS 12s right here. And, uh, I just want to like show you what Jacob does every year for me to set my units up. We're going to go through and, and do the edit overlays and all that stuff. You guys are really going to want to watch this. This is going to be pretty amazing. So here we go. We just got it turned on. So the first thing we do, obviously, we've got the accept screen. We hit the accept screen. Okay. And then the first thing that usually comes up is to configure this device. So you want everything powered up on your boat and ready to go. And we hit configure this device. Um, we're going to select miles per hour. We're in lakes, regular fishing and then we hit finish. So this screen pops up and a lot of people see it and they're like, I hate the screen, can I get rid of it? <laughs> yes, you can. So right here on the corner where it says not now, you're gonna hit that, the, the next three times you start it up, you're gonna get this screen and usually the third or fourth time you start it up, right here above where it says get started, there's a little box that'll pop up that says, Put a check mark here to not see the screen again. Okay. So you okay. put that little check mark there and then you So hit. what is this screen for though? Just so basically this allows you, this gives you the ability to register your device with Lowrance. Um, you can also set up the Lowrance app and things like this. This one um, is for setting up your Lowrance app, connecting oh, cool. it to your smartphone. And what's really great with that is if you use the Lowrance app, you can do things like manage your waypoints and things like that. You can back your waypoints up to the cloud using your phone and things like that. I need to do that, buddy. <laughs> I thought you had been. Uh, no, I hadn't. I did. Don't <laughs> tell nobody in Lawrence. I might get in trouble, but no, I need to do that. So that perfect. sounds cool. So yeah, but um, for your first time setup, I'm going to hit not now on this. Okay. And then we come to this screen. Um, Got the map. Everybody we, were right there on Uluga. Yep, yeah, we right there on Uluga. Yep. Zoom in and see where we're at. Um, sometimes you'll get the pop-up screen that says, you know, make sure all your devices are connected so it can select your data sources and things like that. Um, this unit's a, I kind of accidentally popped that one earlier, so <laughs> we got that done. So we've got our devices selected on here. So, so you're saying we skipped a step, we, sh we did it earlier, like when we were turning all this on. Repeat that one more time so, so everybody knows. It's going to ask you to uh, power everything up and uh, so it's going to select your data sources. So it's going to go in and it's going to look at your temp sensors. It's going to look at the transducers. on okay. the, Everything that it sees on the network and go, okay, I'm supposed to use this information here, this information here, okay. engine data so you, from over here. So You did that when I was busy. Got right, you. yeah. Okay. So we okay. kind of okay. accidentally got that one done ahead of time. Okay. So the next thing we're going to go through is on this unit, we're going to, this is your left console unit. So we're going to set this one up how you like this one. If I remember correctly, on this side, we normally have a map and 2D sonar. 2D sonar. Yep. yep. So if we hit our pages button, we can actually look at the top and you see that screen is set up right there. So a couple things we're going to do ahead of time with this one. We're going to hit our pages button again. We're going to hit our settings key in the upper left corner. And then we go to the advanced. And one thing I know we like to do with yours is we auto hide the menu. Yep, I like that. That makes that menu go off after 15 seconds. So this, right. this menu right here will just go off after 15 seconds. So that's kind of cool. And then if I want it back, I hit the menu button right there. Okay. Exactly. So the next thing we do is we hit our power button and we come over here to where it says adjust splits. We hit that and you see this little pop up. Right. It's right here. We just grab it and we slide it over. Perfect. Until you decide, is that how big you yep. want it? Or I you like want? it. I like it. I like it. Then we hit save. Okay. So now with this screen, we've got your map and your 2D sonar up okay. on the screen. The next thing we would do from here is we're going to set your data overlays on this screen and we're going to put them where you like them. Okay. So we can see there's already a couple on the screen. So again, we go to the power button and then we do edit data overlay. Next thing we have to do is hit menu and this gives us the ability to 
add data, change data, change data sources and things like that. Okay. So we've got our water temp. We can just touch it and slide it and move it where we want. So on this screen. Okay, I'm going to put my depth over here just because that's my depth. Are right. you okay with that? Put uh, my water temp maybe, maybe right there. Okay. So then the other things. I know in the past we've had your time up on the screen. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about adding time. So the add button here on the menu, we hit add. And then we scroll down here towards the bottom. We got a lot of stuff on here. We hit time. And then if I hit the time button here, you can see it pops up on the screen. I just hit the X and then the time button. We want to make zoom the time a, a little times. bit bigger. So we hit zoom a couple times. I'm going to put it right in the middle. You okay with that? Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where I want it. Where do you want to look at <laughs> I'm it? I'm going to put it right there. So All perfect. Right. So that's where you want it. We're good there. Um, what other data do you? Um, um, I usually like my heading, like just like if I'm going across a big body of water, my course and my heading, you know, like if I just want to put the waypoint across the lake and it gives me 189, then I, I like to okay. have 189, so, you know. So now we can go in here. We hit the add button again. And then let's see, we go to the vessel. Okay. So different areas contain different information, like under GPS, that's where we'd see we've got our speed over ground. Okay. So navigation, bearing to waypoint, course, things like that. Uh, so vessel, we touch heading here. There so we it go. tells us right now that we're fading 30, you know, 30 at 35 degrees. degrees. Okay. So. Back us up a little bit. Drifting a little bit, so we're going to yeah. back up just a hair. All right, so now that we've got your heading on screen, what else do we want to add? I want to add my bolts. All right, so again, we hit add. And this one typically falls the down here bar, yeah. under other. And then it shows up and we hit supply voltage. So now we can see on screen that okay. we've got 11.7 volts coming from the batteries. I used to always put my temperatures of my trans of my live wheels on here, but I don't, you know, we don't need to do that now with not putting any fish in the live wheels. Exactly. Gives uh, you a little more real estate. So Yeah. Um, what else do you like to have on yours? Or what do you see popular on some other people's stuff? I mean it really depends. Um, for me on my boat, um, one thing I have on my screen is I have my RPMs up on my screen right here. Oh, that's so cool. that way when I'm running across yeah. the lake, I don't have to look at my RPM gauge. Now you've got with the Mercury, you've got the vessel view and everything, let's, so you can have a whole panel of that let's, stuff. Let's put that. That would be cool. All right, so That'd let's go cool. ahead and... So what we would do here is we're going to go back here. We're going to find engine. And then... RPMs. So now that that's on the screen, you can see it's blank, okay. but I'm going to go ahead and start this again real quick. Take a minute, probably for it to. Well, probably what I need to do now. This is really good, so I'm going to go to config uh, to uh, change my data source, and I want to make sure that it's seeing our gateway. There we go. Mercury features have been enabled. Took it a minute to come in, so now yeah. you can see. Awesome, that's We've got cool. the RPMs on the screen. Put my engine temperature on there too, you know, especially okay. this time of year, that's really important, you know, to have your engine temperature on here. Oil temp. There's I just like temp. to, I like to always let my engine warm up, so that's just a thing that I always have on my screen is my engine temperature, you know, to let that thing get up and, Well, you know. and another thing that that's great for is that if you're, because these engines are so quiet now, you know, used to, you could hear the, Hear the pisser kicking that water out, but right. these engines are so quiet now you don't hear it as much. So now when I so, the temperature goes to 170, I need hey, I got something I need right. to do. A yeah. lot of times if you guys are fishing grass, that grass will clog mm -hmm. up your intakes, and yep. if your engine starts climbing, you know immediately I need yep. to kind of shut down and clean my intakes real quick. Cool, cool. So all right, so if we've got everything on here that we want, we're good with that. We're gonna go ahead and hit save. Okay. So now these options are saved on this screen. Awesome. So one thing that's different between all of our screens is so we put all of these updates on that screen if i went to just my chart screen you're going to see that's not all there right so our screens are set so they can be configured exactly how you want okay each screen just because you put it on one screen you're not going to have it on every screen so that's really good for the guys okay. that okay. you know if you're using a side scan screen and you flop over to it but you don't want all that data right up in your face then you don't have it so okay um, now that we've got this one set up, there you go. That menu slides off the screen automatically. 
Is there anything we need to do to set that sonar? Like, you know, I know in the past we, we have always set the sonar into shallow water mode. Right, so that's a great question. What we'll do now is, so I touched the sonar box and you can see this little orange ring popped up around that screen. Right. So that means when I touch this menu now, I'm gonna have my sonar. Okay. If I touch this box over the map, you can see the orange maps. box, then my mapping information comes up. So whatever screen you're trying to adjust, make sure that orange box is around it. So. The mode, we're gonna set this in shallow. And basically what that does is it tells the unit, if I start searching for a signal, I'm not gonna search. If I had it like in deep water or something like that, it could search out to a thousand feet and it okay. takes a while for that to come back in from there. So we set it in shallow mode because that's what you're fishing in most right. of the time. It's, that's zero to 100 feet, just for you guys that don't know. That's, you know, I'm not ever deeper than 100 feet. So something else I feel like we do a lot, do we turn that backlight off? Um, on the, on the lives, we don't have the backlight oh, on those. Awesome. Okay, cool. So cool. Uh, the frequency, typically, we're gonna set that to high chirp. You can see we have a lot of different frequencies in here, and that means that we need to go in here, pages, settings, and then sonar. Channel one, we go to installation here. So it says source channel one. Explain that. So with these, we have two sources for the sonar on these units. You can run two different transducers simultaneously on the live units if you want to. You can also do it on the carbons. But since we're setting up live units, that's what we're going to talk about here. Okay. So channel one, it's the blue plug on the back of the unit, and basically it's going to be 2D sonar, live sight sonar, and then if you have like an HDI transducer for 2D and down scan, those will all work on that port. Okay. Now channel two, it only works with, it works with 2D sonar, but it is the only port that you can do structure scan from. So okay. your active imaging transducer has to be plugged into channel two. Channel two. That's good to know. That's really good to know. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and get, so if you look at this source up here, channel yep. one, if channel two were turned on, I could see it right here. You can see the other unit that's turned on is your other live okay. at the console. So we see both of those here. So what I'm going to do now, is I touch source name, and I'm just going to call this LC1 for left console channel gotcha. one. Gotcha. Okay. So now, if I look at it somewhere, it's going to say LC left one. console one. Okay. So the transducer type on this one, we know they glassed in these uh, PDWBLs, or so all of our transducers. And if you ever wonder what you have usually about six inches from where the transducer plugs into the unit, there's usually a little silver tag on there. Tells you what it is. That's gonna tell you what the transducer okay. is. And if I remember correctly, they usually put the PDs on here. So we say this one's gonna be a PD. Let me just get a shot of that right quick. Okay. So it should be right here. Oh, there it is, PD1. Yep, I got it right there. So it says it right there on that tag. So that's the tag that he's talking about right there, guys. They're on each one. Yep. Okay. And so they'll have different information on them. So if it's a PD, it's just a puck transducer without a temp sensor in it. Okay. If it's a PDT, that means it's the puck transducer that's got, it's the puck with a transducer and a temp sensor built into it. And then if it says like PDRT, that's a remote temp. And okay. that is, it's got a temp sensor, but instead of it being built into the puck, it's, it's that one sick. cable that's gotcha. got the little copper piece that comes out and goes on the back of the boat. Okay. So those are your options as far as that goes. Okay, okay. So now that we've got that set up, you can see right here at the top of the screen, now it says LC1, LC1 so I like we know that, that's yeah. the source. So let's go back to our menu, our frequency. 99% of the time we run high chirp. Okay. Um, your uh, sensitivity, we leave in auto. Your color line, typically we leave around um, 76. That's you know one thing that we talk about a lot. People are always on the internet you know, hey, I just got a new unit. What settings do I need? <laughs> and everybody tells them, oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. Um, I get on there and I tell everybody the same thing that you guys do. We use auto. Auto is a setting that we've come up with that's basically the best for virtually any condition. Right. Now, when you get to different lakes, you may have to change bump it a it little up bit or bump, bump it down. That's all I ever do. Exactly. Just go plus one, plus two, or plus minus one. It, you know. if, you're, if you're in a lake that's got a lot of dissolved particulates in it, then you may need to turn it down a little bit so that you're not getting so many returns on the screen. Or if you're in clear water and you want to try and see a little bit more stuff, you bump it up. So one this is two. an example of that, guys. So if I hit that menu button, color line, you can see right here, I just bump it one time, you know, bump it twice. Now it just yep. takes it down. So now when you go back, it's just 
it's just right there. You can go back to the default line, um, yep. and it's always going to be on the setting. And then the sensitivity, if we touch that, this is the one that really gets people. You know, everybody's like, oh, turn it up, turn it down. If I turn it up, just a couple of bumps, you can start to see the, I oh, mean, yeah. look at that. Yeah, it blows look how, it all out. That just That's just a couple bumps, and your screen gets filled <laughs> with stuff. Go back to auto. Like I said, we got a fairly decent picture there. If I start taking it down just a couple of bumps, you can see it. Right. It starts clearing the screen out. You can get it to where you're not seeing anything. Right. So again, for this one, leave just it in auto. auto. Yep. So those are some of the main setups in advanced. This is where your surface clarity and all of that stuff is. Typically, we don't mess with that a whole lot. Oh, yeah, um, so your noise rejection, what that does is that kind of looks at the boat and says, okay, I'm picking up some electrical noise here and stuff like that. So it helps filter that out. And then your surface clarity, you know, it takes your, if you have a lot of stuff in the top of your water column, right. you can kind of filter that out. I found like in an algae bloom lake or something, I'll turn that on just a little bit more, you know, and, and it'll just clear it right up. Exactly. Uh, then if we go to more options, this is where you can do things like hit stop sonar so your sonar yep, is not that pinging. All, yeah. um, that's really effective if you're in a deep water lake, if you guys are doing one of those shot. lakes with offshore, mm -hmm. and you go up front on your, on your um, front unit and you're getting interference from your back unit, if you come back here and hit stop sonar or something like that, stops the sonar from pinging and creating interference for you. Uh, the other one is pallets. So this is a personal preference. Um, I use this one a lot. That's, this is kind of one of my favorites. I believe you use favorite. this one a lot yeah. too. Um, if you go to 14, it's kind of like that, but just a change with a blue background. And I tell people there's no right or wrong color palette to use. It's what you can see best, what looks best to you, what your eyes see the best when you're on the water. So, you know, it's kind of a personal preference. Yeah. Um, down scan overlay. This out will overlay your down scan on top of your 2D sonar. I don't use that one a whole lot. I know you don't use it a whole right. lot. Then the other things that people typically use, some people like to use the A-scope, which it shows up here on the side of the screen. And essentially what it is, it's... Instantaneous, it's like a, a flasher. It's Exactly, yeah. that's what I was gonna say. It's a straight line version of, our, of the flasher. Yeah. So some guys use it, some guys don't. Um, fish ID is something obviously you guys <laughs> don't use. Um, you can turn on symbols and basically what it does is any return it sees in the water, basically it shows up as a fish symbol. Yeah. So we know those aren't we all always correct. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So. Hey, one thing I think we forgot over here on the map that I always like to set, I always like to set uh, look ahead um, right here. I, I hit that yep. button right there to that way. I've got the majority of the map in front of the direction the boat's traveling, which is kind of cool. Uh, another thing that I will turn on are my uh, uh, my range rings and my you know my pointer signal. You right. know, just, so the so the range rings. I and do the that. Pointer signals. That's pages settings, um, chart, and then your range rings are turned on here, and your heading extension is yep. turned on. Here. I like I like having those. I put the range rings especially you know, when I'm fishing up front. So when I zoom in, I know exactly how far it is out to a brush pile or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I really like my, my heading sensor just to, you know, if I'm putting it on, on a waypoint, I want to go directly to the waypoint. Exactly. I use those a lot. It helps you, it helps you to be able to line up to those waypoints that you're working mm -hmm. to. Um, it kind of lets you see where you're heading. If you're heading across lake or okay. um, a big body of water, it's great. You know, if you're in water, you're not really familiar with, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've got that heading extension up, it's going to show you running. And if you were running over here, you're coming up on this hump, and it turns out it's a really shallow hump. Right. That you know that ex heading extension shows you you're you're heading right, right for that hump. One other thing that I will do some is in my pages, I will set up. I'll have a chart. I will put sonar in there, and then I will put side scan in there, and I will put it under this right here. I just moved it all around. If you guys are following me there on the screen, I hit save. And then this right here, I will put left only to where this unit's left. And then I will do the exact opposite over on my other unit. The other thing then, I would adjust my splits. I think this is a cool screen because I get the full width all the way across. Now, obviously that's in auto right there because we're in such deep water. I take my range and my downscan. You can see I'm in the orange box right there. I take my range 
and I take that out of auto. I usually run it, you know, somewhere between 100, 120, 130, um, or 100, you know, 100. I was going to say, if you look at my boat with uh, with our active imaging, uh, most of the time mine's in about 120. Yeah. And people I are see. like, well, you can look out so much further. I'm like, I understand that, but if I'm trying to look out here 300 feet or something like that, I'm really missing I, everything I'm close. Miss what I'm looking right. for. Right. That's the only thing that I think I take my boat out of auto I'm, i can see that i messed up here in my uh, in my pages i've got these backwards. backwards okay so that's great let's talk about that if you've got them backwards yeah, after you do it i've got the sonar where i wanted the map so if we come here and we just touch the screen and we touch and hold we get this little there wrench icon yeah takes us back there we can swap it and then hit save again now, and now oh, that's perfect now I would need to go in, put all my edit overlay stuff that we just put on that previous screen now on this screen. If I choose, when I'm doing a lot of side imaging structure events, I like to run it in that, you know, just gives me something different right. to look at every and, now. And, and typically that's a screen you're gonna use in your pre-fishing when, you're, when you're looking for those spots. Absolutely. Trying to Absolutely. find those find those humps, find ledges, find those yep. little logs and things that are lay downs underwater. Right. So and it's it's a great tool to be able to use that out there and find those. All right. So that's how I set it up, guys. Is there anything there? I'm Let's talk about the quick the quick access keys while we're right here real quick. Let's set up those quick access keys. My favorite feature. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like them too. So the quick access keys are the four keys on the right-hand side of the 12 and the 16-inch unit. So they give you the ability to do quick accesses. So one thing that you guys, <laughs> every year we talk to you guys, we're like, Hey, what can we do to help you guys? I love and, this. This and, is so awesome. You guys actually every, listen to us. Every you year you for guys years, it, so was, much, it, yeah. it was like, man, I wish we had a key for this, or mm -hmm. I wish we had a key for that. Mm -hmm. and what you want a key for isn't a key that, say, Casey would want oh, or no. Ish would want. Yeah. Every, you know, everybody's, everybody's different. different. Everybody likes to set things up. So we decided we'll give you programmable keys. Yeah. Now, there's four keys, and everybody's like, all right, well, that's four keys. And I'm like, well, actually, yeah, it's eight it's keys, eight keys yeah. because we give you a quick push and a long push right. on them. So these keys have not been set up for anything. So if I just do a quick push, it takes me to my quick access key screen where I can set them up. But if I've already set those up and I want to change something, simply all I have to do is hit my pages button, go to settings, and then right here at the top where it says quick okay, access, access keys, keys. It takes, you right back to it that takes us right back to that screen. So can I, all right, so I like to set this one up as um, stop sonar. Where is it at? Uh, it might be towards the top. Sonar. Let's see. See. Uh, yeah, pause, pause sonar. sonar. Okay. So now that's a real quick press. Um, I like to set the long press right there. Uh, I usually set that as my volume for my... Uh, Sonica. Yeah. <laughs> so that's volume up. I'll set my long press over here for volume down. Okay, now I'll set this one. I like to set it as a waypoint and I like to set it as a brush pile. If I just idle over brush pile really quick, I'll set this one as a rock pile. I use it a bunch. Um, so let's talk about that real quick that okay. you just did. Okay. Most people don't realize it is you can go in there and you can change those waypoint symbols and you can set them up also on your quick access keys so that you can set it up for a specific thing, a rock pile, a brush pile, things like that. It doesn't have to be just the blue dot. Right. So you can set the and you can set them up when you do a regular waypoint when you you know you can change it on screen when you make a waypoint normally. But for your quick access you can actually set these quick access keys up to be specific waypoint icons that you use on the water. I just love it. What else do you use them for? Um, Give me some I, ideas that maybe I don't know about. So this one on your pages key, so when you do a quick press, it's always going to open your home page. The one thing I do with that is I set mine to capture a screenshot. So if currently to capture a screenshot, you press your power button and your pages key at the same, same time. time. Right. So I set mine up so that all I have to do is press and hold my pages key to take my screenshots. Cool, cool, cool. Because that's one thing I have to do when I'm on the water. <laughs> if you, if you're all the time, when you see something really cool down there, you want to... Yeah. When when I see something cool when we're testing new product, you know, if I've got to take a screenshot and say, all right, guys, look look what it's doing. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes I tease Edwin with him. I'm like, <laughs> hey, we got this new product that you can't play yeah, with yet, but look yeah, at this yeah, screenshot. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> what else would you set these others for? Um, you know, it's just so quick access key. Um, 
pausing sonar, logging sonar. So uh, I'm not I, I know you don't yeah. do that, but that's one thing I do is I what, do a lot of sonar what's logs. What's system so can, standby? So system standby, if you set it up, so if you press your power button and then you hit your standby key, you know, basically it puts your unit to sleep. That's what I always do my this one on. I yeah. did it wrong, so yeah. I, I need to I need to do it to system standby. Stand okay, right. that's that's. I was like, man, that sounds awful familiar. Okay. Right. So uh, the other thing you can do is you can put your power poles on them. Um, you can use them. You can set them up oh, for uh, anchoring your trolling motor. Oh, so cool. if we were out here fishing, like let's say you hooked up to a fish and you came back here, and you were trying, you know, let's say you had a. A nine pounder. Oh yeah, that'd land, be great. And you're trying to land that nine pounder. Right. And you realized you, you were fighting that fish and you totally forgot to anchor up there. Oh yeah, you, you could, could just set, hit it right you quick. You could just come back here, have That's a cool. quick access key to anchor it. So then it would. Okay. So I mean, there's all kinds of. So you set like your system standby and stuff like that up on short presses. Um, I set uh, my audio volume and my up and down. I put those on my short presses and then like my system standby and stuff like that, I put that on long presses. Uh, I kind of do it the opposite of way, the way you've done it. Yeah. So we, same sure. thing, just different ways, w whatever works for somebody. So now it's just important that we hit that save button and we'll hit that right there. So now that's all in there. So if we were to go over here and I was to hit uh, number two, hold it long time. You didn't set that one, or that's your volume. Oh, that's my volume, yeah. So quick press. Okay. Quick press, it's a waypoint. There's, okay. there, there, there's another waypoint. So you can see right there, we've made waypoint number one and waypoint number two out here in the middle of 45 feet or 50 right. feet of water. And then so. we'll zoom in on the screen here. You can see right yeah. here where, where we're at. Okay. There's our two waypoints that he just yeah. created. So that's how you set a unit up, guys. I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Now, I'm going to go through and I'm going to set up my other one for side scan, down scan. So we'll just try to show you that real quick. So let's let's do that. Sounds good to me. Okay.